Soil is a farmer's most valuable natural resource. In this video we hear how trees help conserve soil, while often bringing other benefits to the farm too. Well, my name is Alec Olson, um, I farm on the Glengarry Road um, on 300 hectares which is about 20 kilometres directly west of Napier. What I'd like to talk about is the, the opportunities that most hill country farmers have to have their cake and eat it, eat it too. On this rolling hill country, dissected by uh, gullies and gorges, we have the good land, the flatter land and the rolling land where all the soil has managed to stay, but we have also these gullies and gorges where most of the soil has actually been taken off in rainstorm events. And there lies the opportunity for farmers to actually turn these liabilities into assets. Ever since this trust started, the uh, farm's been planting poles for erosion control and it's a very necessary part of farming on the east coast as you can tell there's some recent erosion up this gully and um, the best thing you can do on this kind of country is plant willows up the, up the gullies and it's just the same old recipe as it's been around for 40 years. Uh, very successful and um, very effective. It also provides opportunity for fodder in a drought and one of our managers here was very keen on that as a feed source in droughts and he did it very successfully too. I'm uh, Peter Garwith and we're standing on a uh, farm in the Longbush Valley looking through to a place that would be um, highly erodible years ago. Um, we were subjected to quite a severe storm and we lost up to 20% of the country that's got, you can see the eucalypts and away in the distance the, the poplars. It was so severe that it had a, a, quite a, a dramatic effect uh, economically on the farm to, to produce for probably um, the next five years. We struggled with being able to feed the stock well enough to get reasonable land percentages because of the, the drop in livestock production that affected us financially. So I felt that if we wanted to stay on this farm and be economic, we had to do something about solving the, uh, the, the, the soil erosion problem. Most, most of the, the North Island or the lower North Island was devastated by the weather bomb of, of 2004. Of much more significance to us here on, at Ratamaramaru was the, the storm of 2006 when there was a very local rainstorm that caused huge erosion on our farm and some of the paddocks we lost up to 30 percent of our grass. This scared the daylights out of Di and me and so we um, frantically approached Horizons to see what we, we ought to be doing with our land because I thought if we have another storm like this and lose another proportion of our, our pastoral farm, um, we could be in real trouble. It was very striking that the land that was already in plantation forestry coped with the adverse events much better than the untreed part of the farm. We had very few slips in the forested area. And I think once the trees get to six or eight years old, they're capable of holding the hillside up. After having planted or retired um, probably a third of the farm, we still run the same number of animals. The block of pine trees just out in front of us occupying a, um, a fairly severely eroded um, southerly facing gully system um, that had very little grazing indeed. In 1995 we fenced it out and planted it and now we've stopped the erosion, we've got cleaner water but, but better than that the, the paddock to the right is now sheltered instead of being extremely exposed to the south. And in big westerly winds, we have shelter down in the front of this block. So all the problems are solved and we really haven't lost any grazing potential at all. You can see the, the eucalypts were planted back in the uh, late 70s and the 80s and we've progressed to uh, modern planting management which is uh, all poplars and willows and the paddock in the distance there We've been able to maintain the earth flows and we've had very little slipping even in um, some quite severe storms. And the plus for the regime we've got over there is that we've managed the, the willow trees uh, by pollarding them so they're now a source of stock feed during droughts. So uh, that paddock doubles, um, not only are we getting protection during the winter but it's quite a valuable asset during the summer for uh, stock feed. So this is a well planted gully, you can see that it's well covered, um, we've used Matsudanas, Matsudana hybrids, um, there's even a wee patch of uh, Kanuyanagi, you know the Japanese willow at the very bottom here, 
just to add a bit of interest. And there are some scattered poplars. You can tell that the face does need more poplars, but the gully itself has been held up very, very well. You'll probably use a few more down the bottom end here, but I suggest the spacing could be quite wide, really, just to get the... Um, you can still get good results with quite wide spacings. They could be at least 20 metres apart down this bottom end. Uh, the biggest mistake people make when they plant willows is planting too close together and they're not thinning out. So uh, we suggest you either plant close together and thin out within 10 years or just plant them, say, uh, 20 metres apart. This particular block that we're um, looking at is just a, uh, a six hectare hillside that was planted in 14 different poplar clones in 2003. I was a wee bit concerned that um, over the years the property had been denuded of natural vegetation and um, needed to put something back onto the slope. Although it's, it's difficult to, um, to appreciate in these conditions, but um, the hillside itself is reasonably unstable and is prone to uh, slumping and slipping. So the uh, poplars were just a, uh, a waste to a means in terms of trying to uh, stabilise the hillside. Um, now that we've got a lot of mature trees, it might look like a lot of shading and we probably do lose some pasture growth under those trees, but on the other side of it, before we put those trees there, uh, we were losing that ground to slip, so we ended up with bare ground. Uh, our investment in fertiliser and lime and all the things that we put on the hills to, to make a farm were ending up in the gully at big expense. Um, now we can fence in areas that we never thought we could fence before, uh, we can put tracks in areas that we never thought we could put tracks in and that's all down to having stable hillsides. Horizon's response was, was very rapid and they suggested that we undertake a, a whole farm plan and identify the strengths and weaknesses of, of the whole farm, the, the pastoral land and the land that was suitable for forestry. And as I expected, they identified a further 200 hectares of land that was highly erodible and it was obvious with all the erosion that we had already experienced. This land desperately needed to be taken out of pastoral farming and put into trees. So we now have approximately 600 hectares of our 1,100 hectares in forestry and about 400 hectares in pastoral farming. The farm itself, the, the, the livestock operation, is on the best of our land. We've been able to fertilise it heavily, subdivide, bring water onto the land, etc., and, and really optimise our, our ability to farm this area. Horizons is one of a number of regional councils who, with the help of Ministry for Primary Industries funding, provide support to farmers on erosion-prone land. Farmers in the Gisborne District also have support through MPI's East Coast Forestry Project. We're planting um, three metre poplar and willow poles for uh, soil conservation. Um, it's done a uh, partnership between the farmer and uh, the regional council. Firstly for uh, the farmer it's uh, able to keep his productive land and reduce the amount of slips that he have on his property. And secondly with the council, um, the partnership there is to see on the regional front that uh, getting less sediment into the tributaries and the main waterways of the Warrapa. Uh, the advantages of forestry as we see them for Balmoral and also for the whole of the high country um, are first and foremost it is about protecting our soils and enhancing those soil qualities. I believe that conservation starts right at the soil. I believe that we need to protect our soils first and foremost. That's the first conservation thing that we can do. So Tikawawa is 1,400 acres, about 700 acres on each side of that big gorge down there. And during Cyclone Bowler, that gorge was just a mess. It was, yeah, it was just falling apart. It was 300 feet on each side, and they're pretty much straight down, rubble all through. It was just, yeah, a real mess. So we got forestry grants to plant that, and that was mostly pines, although we were some of the or a couple of the first people that wanted to plant something different. So we planted sequoia, catalpa, cypress lusitanica, the catalpa are a waste of time, so the koi are not much better, but the lucitanica, they are fantastic. But anyway, mostly pine, and now you walk through and it's, it's paradise. You know, with the river there, with the big trees, you know, trees I can remember planting, just, yeah, I still remember planting them. Now, 
you walk through and that just way over my head, ferns underneath, bird life, deer running through. So that's, yeah, it's pretty neat and beforehand it was, it was produced nothing at all. And if we'd left it, it would, yeah, it would be gone. It'd be just down in Gisborne Flats now.